Want to see what it's like to be an interior designer and come hang out with me for the day? So first order of the day, I'm going to walk over to my client's house. She lives right around the corner from me, so she's super close, so I'm just going to walk. And we're going to check up on the paint, and we're also going to meet somebody there to give us a quote to lack of the stairs. And this is how I'm going to start off my Monday morning. So we did for contractors. We were like a half hour late. That's like the story of my life. So for any of you guys out there who are like, I think I want to be an interior designer. Part of it is waiting for people all of the time. I am somebody who's like a stickler for being on time. So when people are late, I'm just like, oh. So Monday is sourcing day. It's about, it's about 10, 15 a.m. I'm done making my list for the week. I'm done kind of organizing my week and all of that. So I'm going to choose fabrics and I need you guys to comment below on which color is your favorite. So I've got a client who likes kind of the warmer tones. She's already got a lot of the reds and oranges and golds in her house and we're just doing her drapery. So let me know which one is your favorite. I'm gonna turn you around. Maybe, maybe I'm gonna turn you around. Okay, so do you like the red? Which is kind of a, it's got a bit of more of a golden undertone do you like the gold so kind of like a mustard sort of color or do you like the orange let me know in the comments below which ones you guys like the best so I need to show you this this is what my car looks like all the time oh shit it's always so full and there's nothing I can do about it. I have a problem. Just jamming because I'm stuck because there's a train. Oh, won't you stay with me? We're at my favorite store. Yay! I just found this and it freaks me out. Check it out. It's a face. It's a face and a stool. You sit on the face. Sometimes my feet hurt because I wear heels. So I find cute couches like this to sit on. Look at the sparkle. So I'm gonna teach you when you see a sofa and you think this is a really great deal on a sofa. So this sofa in particular was $699 at Home Sets. Really cute Chesterfield style sofa. I'm gonna show you guys how you can tell if it is a quality piece that you should actually invest in. So one thing that I want you to do is try to actually pick it up and be careful, be careful of your back and everything else, but try to pick it up and set it down and see if it sounds like real wood. You can, if you can actually get a view of the bottom of it, you can see if the wood looks like it's pressed together and then it's made out of particle board. So this particular sofa was actually made out of particle board and not out of real wood, which is why it is far less expensive but it also is not going to be as high of a quality. The other thing that you're going to check for is the foam itself and the seat and the density. So check the actual seat and see if there's a zipper along the seat at all and see if you can actually get in there and see if the foam is wrapped in anything or if it's just a piece of foam that's sort of stuck in there. Um, also, if it's wrapped in just a little bit of cotton batting, it's probably a polyurethane foam and more often than not on these less expensive sofas, this polyurethane foam is usually a lower density foam, which means that when you sit on any given part of the sofa, you usually always sit in the same spot. So if you sit in that same spot over and over and over again, your sofa is going to kind of dent in in that spot. What you want to look for is if there's some sort of down mix or feather mix or if there's a high density foam and if there is a good 
high density foam in there. Typically it won't really be wrapped in anything if it's kind of like a soy based durable foam. It's just going to be a piece of foam and it's not going to be wrapped in cotton batting. Cotton batting is what makes it kind of soft when you have the lower grade foam. So those are two things that you can look for. Another thing that you can look for is just feel down the ends of the sofa and see if it's hollow. Most of the less expensive sofas are actually made hollow and everything's just sort of built on a frame. So if you have kids who like to sometimes jump on things or a big dog or even, you know, a husband who just sort of flops down, that is not going to be as sturdy of a frame as something that is solid through the arms when you sort of press in on the fabric. I went in there to find rugs. And they had like three rugs that were actually big enough, like eight by 10. And here's a big pet peeve of mine, okay? And probably of most designers, is people are using two small rugs. They had like a million five by eight rugs. And five by eight is almost always too small, almost always. And no, I'm not talking just in like huge mansions. It's almost always too small. If you have a five by eight rug, it's probably too small for your house. Good afternoon. Sometimes I'll come home for a break and play frisbee with my doggies. <laughs> Good boy. So that's pretty much how my day went today. I will hang out with you again tomorrow. And um, I'm off to go. It's about 5.30. I'm off to go see a client. We're going to go pick out some lighting. Um, I work a lot at night. That's just what happens. People are off work at night. And so what happens. So um, hang out with me tomorrow. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button. And make sure that you leave any suggestions that you have as to some videos that you'd like to see. Okay, we'll see you later.